Is it coming, Sabira? Chantil, I think you're here with us. And I'm waiting for one other co-host. So give us just a second. And if you would like to join as a co-host, that would be great. like we're having problems here. Give me a sec. See people popping in. It looks like we're having technical difficulties. Hmm. Okay, so the, here we go. Gotcha. Hi. Okay. <laughs> there we go. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm Great. good. I think you had to let me in or something. I don't know. I'm still learning all this. Oh, you're doing a good job. Good job. So I got it. Okay. So we have a few people with us and um, we'll get rolling. You see the subject today is how to move forward when you're stuck. So uh -huh. You could definitely tell us a bit about that. And I assumed you could as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is going to be kind of an open forum discussion. If people have suggestions or, you know, I'll come up with some, some suggestions. <laughs> Experience. Well, this is uh, this is you know, this is your show, and I'm I'm just glad to be a guest on here. Um, for those folks who haven't uh, weren't here last week, I think uh, it might be good to just give a recap of who you are and and why why you even want to do the show. <laughs> All right. Well, my name is Erin McAllister. I am a mother of three. I am a business owner. I have worked with exchange students, finding host families, traveling, and most recently started on this venture to basically pay myself first, something I should have been doing a long time ago. Um, so that's kind of where I am, and that's one of the steps to get out of a sticky situation. So that's mm -hmm. what I do is just share with people what helped me. Mm -hmm. and help them. Yep. Yep. And so, you know, a recap, uh, you've been a lot of places over the years, you know, you've traveled the world. Was it nine countries in Africa that you, um, have been to and, you know, you, you've been a lot of places, seen a lot of things. Um, you and I have known each other, what we figured out last week, 13 years, Yep. 13 years. And during that time, you know, both of us have gone through a lot of changes. Um, and so, you know, talk a little bit about, about that for you, you know, the different changes you've been through. Well, since we met, uh, we, when we first met, I was struggling financially. Mm -hmm. I just moved to Baltimore. I was on my own. I didn't have any family out there in Maryland. I didn't have any children at the time, but I was still struggling to take care of myself. Since then, I became a mom, entered into a relationship that maybe wasn't the best one um, for me at some point, but entered into it, and we ended up having three wonderful children. Um, transitioned from working full-time jobs to after my second child, I was a stay-at-home mom, and that was really wonderful and really challenging at the same time kind of lost myself in the middle of all of that mm. um, so since then which that's been four and a half years ago or so I have gotten out of sticky situations financially although that is still in process mm -hmm. emotionally and mentally uh, with the relationship, moving myself to a new place where I'm stronger uh, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, 
and I'm in process of becoming a better mom, which is never ending, I think, too. <laughs> Here I am. Yeah, well, here you are. Well, you know, I, I always I'm just I'm so amazed by um, I just want to say hi. You have we have several people on here. Chantille, Lewis. Hey, uh, yeah, Jilly Wisdom. I love that. And Lion. You know, I love I love I love a lion. I always love a lion. Um, but, you know, I, I am so amazed at the transformation that I've been able to witness as your friend <clears throat> over these years. Um, you know, when we met, it was like you were a little girl. And um, <laughs> I got a few years on you, but, um, and you know, and now, you know, you, you, this mother and an entrepreneur and, and having the courage to leave a situation with a man that you knew was not the best, not a healthy situation for you or for your children. And I watched you struggle with that and, and find the courage and, and a lot of what kept you there was the financial piece, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and to, to watch you pull it, you know, pull the courage together to make a move for yourself has been nothing less than um, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, I salute you a hundred percent. I do. I do. Um, so we'll, we'll unpack that a little bit more too, but um, also I just want to say if anybody has any, um, any questions, you can leave a question in the chat area by I believe what you do is you type in the letter Q with a backslash. Um, I think that's how you do it. But we're watching uh, over there and we'll be definitely talking to you. And if you guys want to join the conversation at any time, just let us know and we will bring you in. We do have, uh, you know, two available seats open. Um, and, I, and I do believe that, you know, uh, a lot of these women are saying they were led here and this was like, you know, they were just kind of getting to know Blab and found their way here. This is such a powerful, I mean, live video anyway is such a powerful medium um, to connect us and to allow us to tell our story and, and offer support, encouragement. You, you just don't know, right? Um, so let me tell you a little bit about me. You guys see I have this Believe shirt on and the L is a pink ribbon. I am a breast cancer thriver, even more than survivor. I'm thriving. It hasn't been too, too long. Um, I was diagnosed <clears throat> with uh, stage three breast cancer um, in 2012 and spent the next almost 24 months in treatment. Um, I had a... Uh, uh, six months of, six and a half months of um, chemotherapy. I do have hair now, it's just cold. <laughs> so I have a hat on, <laughs> I do have hair now. It does grow back, it does grow back. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, oh, thank you, thank you, so amazing. Um, but, uh, yeah, so anyway, it was six and a half months of chemo, which kicked my tail. Um, during those six months, I was also, um, I had, uh, what do you call it, a blood transfusion every single month because my iron levels were so low. My, my um, doctor was like, how in the world are you even walking around? Like, really? But, you know, your body will adjust to what its normal is. What it, you know, it, I didn't know that the way I felt was not normal. I just got used to it. So um, there was that. Um, then in July of 2012, uh, July 17th, 18th, I had a double mastectomy. And a few months later, I went through 35 rounds of radiation. So it's been an amazing ride for both of us. Um, and, you know, facing things that look like how in the world are we going to get to the other side of these things? But the bottom line is that we did. We are, and you know what I learned in the process 
you know, my my entire world was it was as if somebody had thrown a hand grenade in the middle of my my life and everything blew up and it was just shrapnel all around. Um and for a while I was stuck. You know, life puts you in a it put me in kind of a holding pattern where I had to take some time and just kind of evaluate where well, first of all, I had to let the chips fall where they may. And then um, and then it was about moving forward. Like I, I was determined that I was going to live. And yes, it looks completely different than it did before. Yeah, I know those darn chips. <laughs> um, but I had I, I, I was like, I'm going to I'm going to live. But that meant I had to recreate my life. One of the things that helped me and and for those of you who's who know people who've been through uh any type of cancer knows that it will it demolishes your finances and um you know whether it's cancer or diabetes it could be anything you know in in your case it was leaving a relationship when you're going through transformation and you get out of that plate you're in that place of i'm stuck and you decide to move <clears throat> for many of us finances come up and it's like, how am I going to rebuild all this? Well, one of the things that helped me was that, you know, I, I knew that these dollar bills weren't real and I had started saving in gold. I started saving in real gold and that saved my house because when the chips fell, I actually had some chips to, to cash in that had increased in value. And I was able to save my house from um, from foreclosure twice during that time. I couldn't work. It was not an option. When you were in chemo and all this, this working is not an option. So <clears throat> that's uh, that's, you know, my story in a nutshell. And, you know, Aaron, you know, yours wasn't breast cancer, but, you know, yours was what it was. So so, you know, share if you would about what you got, what got you to this place and why being here is so important. Just like you said, mm. um, anytime you transition from whatever the situation is, at some point you have to put yourself first and take care of you and your family because whether it's cancer, like you said, diabetes, relationship, you lost your job, whatever it is, it affects your well-being in many areas so with me I mean as a stay-at-home mom I didn't have a whole lot of income coming in mm -hmm. really unless I went out and did something on my own I had little ones so I was not able to do a lot on this side from home mm -hmm. with um, and so it really it really felt impossible at the time now looking back I think I kind of minimize it but at the time I really felt like there was not a lot of ways for me to go there were not, were not a lot of options I didn't mm. have family there I was in Maryland now I'm here in Indiana so I didn't have a lot of things I, in fact I didn't have any family I just had um, his side of the family and they were they're wonderful I love them but they weren't uh, always readily available. There was still a, a distance away. So the same thing, financial was just a huge struggle, struggle. And I have to, I had to begin to get my finances in order, get a budget for the little bit that came in. And then, like I said last week, start with 10% savings for myself. And that's where we are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think, you know, sometimes people don't, they minimize the fundamentals. And I'm always talking about, you know, focusing on the fundamentals. And, you know, we're told a lot of times to, uh, you know, to pay yourself first, that we all need to save something. And, and you know, for a while we may save, but then, you know, it's, it's something that looks like it's pressing comes up. And then what do we do? 
we kind of, I call it stealing from myself. I'll go, oh, let me just pull a hundred bucks or take 50 bucks out of my saving and I'll put it back next week when I get paid. And for most people, some people, you know, they're, they will do that. But most people that I have talked to don't put it back. And so, you know, I advocate always, not only you need a, a, a rainy day fund because there's gonna, you know, there's gonna be days where it's just like, uh, you know, the car needs tires or, you know, something unexpected happens, but it's not earth shattering. And, you know, at 41, there was no way I could have prepared my mind for the fact that I would be facing my mortality. You cannot prepare for that. You can't. You cannot prepare for, you've got three children, <clears throat> a house, a household, a way of living. You've got all of that. And to, to realize I'm in a situation where it's irreconcilable. Mm -hmm. The differences are just, it won't work. And this is not healthy. I have to choose me. And um, the having the fundamentals of paying myself first. And not just not just paying myself first. That's right. We have to be number one in our own lives, Jilly. We have to be. But so many times women, we don't put ourselves first. You know, I mean, you know, we put our kids, our businesses, our spouse, our our jobs, our our parents, we put everybody, and then it's like we get what's left. And usually that's deficit. It's like there's hardly anything left. Same thing when it comes to our money, right? I'll put aside something, but then, you know, this person needs this, that person needs that. And then, honestly, when I fell on, when cancer came, there was nobody to help me. I had given everything out and then there was nothing to help me. So thank goodness I had the habit of paying myself first. It is the way it is. Yep, it's the way it is with most of us. Um, pay myself first. And that's not selfish. It is, um, it may be self-centered, but I don't look at self-centered as a bad thing. Like I have, I am the center of my universe. I have to be, because if I'm not here, then I'm not here. And then what's the point? <laughs> you it's have like to be. Planes. You have to put the mask on yourself before we put it on the children, because we have to take care of ourselves before we can help anybody else. And I know, doesn't that, and I'm not a mother, but I'm sure when you hear that on the plane, that probably sounds like, no, 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 I want to put the gas mask on my child first, right? Right. And then me. Exactly. But then if your kid needs something else, you don't have oxygen, they're not, you, they're in a bad situation anyway. So, you know, we're on, on this show, we're all about advocating the habit of pay yourself first. But here's the deal. It's not, it, it's not almost enough to just pay yourself first because the problem is we've been sold a bill of goods and I'm gonna get on a little high horse, a little rant here. Take it as it comes, whatever. Preach, but, sister. you know, if you look at, I don't have, I don't, I don't have my wallet with me. If you guys take out your dollar bill and you look at your dollar bill, they t look, these are notes, they're promises to pay, they're promissory notes. It's not real money. There you go. It's not real money. And that's the, t that's the tough part to realize why is it that we can't get out of debt? When I figured this piece out, and this all happened while I was on my sick bed for two years, it dawned on me, I couldn't get out of debt because I was only operating in a debt instrument. The only thing I was doing was moving around ones and fives and tens and twenties and hundred dollar bills. I never had actual money. What is money? The only, you can go back to the constitution. It tells you gold and silver. If you don't have gold, if you don't have silver, you don't have real money. Therefore you're always operating in debt. Just that simple. And that, when, when that concept dawned, when it finally landed on me, when I finally understood that, oh my gosh, I will never be without debt. 
simply because I never have any money. And I didn't know that in my 20s and 30s, but I just thought, oh, this is cool. And it seems like it makes sense to save, you know, take a little bit of my savings and put that even into gold. And what that does is gives me spendable. I need liquid, you know, we need liquid currency to handle situations that come up, that savings account. But then I realized in my, when, when breast cancer hit, I needed a savings account that I couldn't touch, wouldn't touch. And this was my like tsunami fund. When the tsunami hits, I need a major shelter. And cash is not it. Cash is not it. So uh, what did she say here? Our birth certificates are bills from the door. Yes, gold and silver will be the main. You're, you're right. Most people don't know that. Um, that our birth certificates are actually bills. If you turn them over, it's, it's, this is a deep, deep topic. This is a really deep topic. <clears throat> um, so, you know, and Aaron, I, oh, are you there? I'm here. Oh. <laughs> uh-huh. Just uh, got it. You just got it? That's the back. What's that? That's the back of my birth certificate. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So your birth certificate is actually a bond. Believe it or not. Is that your little one? Yes. Hey, little one. Mar is it Mariah? It's Mariah. I could not do this show with the boys. That's okay. <laughs> Hi, Mariah. Border around it. I'm covering up my details, but yes, I see the border around it. Yep. So, you know, we want to start deal get get out of the the matrix, you know, the matrix of relationships that that really are not serving us. Um uh living in places we really are not in love with, doing work that we really are not in love with. You know, we have this opportunity, Aaron, me at, at I'm now 45. You, I'm not gonna tell your age, that's up to you, but um, you know, to be able to 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 take this time and consciously recreate our lives, knowing, you know, not living in this illusion anymore. Like I don't have any rose colored glasses on about things. I see things for what they actually are now. Those kind of situations are not a problem. She's a mom. She's got to go attend to the, the little ones. Um, you said embedded into the paper, you can see it's a bill or a bond. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I didn't know that. You taught me something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go pull mine up and look at that. But I know that that's what a birth certificate is. It basically, when you sign your name on there, you're actually signing over your child's labor when they get, oh, Aaron didn't hear that. So our birth certificates, when we as parents sign them, you're actually signing over your child's labor once they get of age to work. And so they can take our, they take our birth certificates and they sell them. That's how other countries are like, yep, yeah, we know we can get more labor out of you because that, that birth certificate is the bond. Um, so, you know, so it's uh, the route that Aaron and I have decided to go and, and other folks that we're helping is really, really simple. You know, we open a, a free uh, gold savings account, which cost me nothing to open, which, you know, I thought was pretty cool. Um, that's why the army could get the son from home and make him serve back in the day. Uh-huh. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense now. Wow. I never thought about that, but that makes sense. Um so to combat this, we have a very simple solution, which is a place to start. Um, taking a small portion of our income and converting these worthless dollars, fiat currency, into actual gold. Taking that gold and just saving it, hanging, hanging on to it until that rainy day or that tsunami hits and now you've got something that has grown in value. So you never have to worry about, you know, it's, it's bigger than an emergency. And I'm not a scare tactic person. I'm not, um, 
I'm not into, you know, uh, although I do believe in conspiracy theory, but that's not what the show is about. Um, I just see a lot of things that I didn't, you know, the veils are gone from my eyes. But we really want to, you know, make space available for people to just do a simple thing. A simple thing of saving yourself through the habit of saving, but not in the, you know, think about this, Aaron, and, and tell me your opinion about this and anybody else too. To take debt instruments, put that into a bank and say you're saving. It's a debt instrument. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. What do you think about that? I think you're right. I'm with you on that. I mean, when you when you think about it, it's ridiculous. Right, it is. And the fact that that I mean, the government never lied to us. They never were saying, "Hey, this is real money." They it, that's our fault. And I think it's all uh, you know. It's interesting that people that work for FDIC don't want to bank at banks themselves. You know, credit unions at the least, mm -hmm. or at the most, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, for me, uh, when that happened, I, I became an avid believer in real, like I want something I can put my hands on, real estate, you know, my home. I own my home or I don't actually own it because I'm still paying a mortgage. So let's be honest. That's another, it's like, see these little subtle use of words that will lull you into like, uh, it's almost a hypnotism, right? right? So it's like, I don't own my home. Yeah, they call myself a homeowner. Let me stop paying the mortgage. When I stop paying the mortgage, that's when I realize I don't not a homeowner. I have a very long lease with the option to buy when I come up with a whole bunch of money to pay it off. But I don't right. own it right now. You know, and even after I pay that off, I still have to pay taxes on it. So come on now. Let's call a thing a thing. So so there is that. And, and, you know, I choose to take control of my savings and not have it tied up in, for me, this is not for everybody. And I'm not saying for anybody who does this, if it, whatever works for you is awesome. I'm just letting people know what works for me. I want my savings to be something I can control and that I know is going to appreciate. I know is going to hold value over a long time. A 401k doesn't do that. A 401k was not even designed. You know, if you look up the history of 401ks, they weren't designed to be used the way we're using them. So the stock market, all that stuff can is just manipulated. It's manipulated. But if I have a, a savings account where I can take, you know, an X amount of dollars and get the same value of gold, and then I get to keep it versus having it over in a bank where I have no control, no say, no power. And they're charging me anyway for having a checking and savings account. So I'm paying for that. That's freaking ridiculous. So, uh, so anyway, that is what we're doing. Um, every week we're going to, you know, come on the show. We're going to talk with you guys about, you know, how things are developing, what it is we're learning about the monetary system, how our lives are transforming and changing, and <clears throat> why it is so important to not only save, but convert some of that, those dollars into actual gold that you can actually do something with, that you can, you know, you can build a legacy on that. You cannot, for the long haul, trust and believe. Go and talk to a wealthy person. See if they keep all their holdings in paper. They don't. They wouldn't do that because they know it's it doesn't mean anything. They wouldn't do that. So it looks like I lost like like I lost uh, Aaron. She'll be back. Um, but you know, wealthy wealthy people have tangible assets. They have real estate. They have gold. They have you know precious metals, precious gems. Things that are that man cannot create, because if we can create it, if man can create it, man will manipulate it. That is true. So, you know, I I tend to, you know, <clears throat> help people set up things that 
cannot be manipulated, where you can have not only ownership, but also control. And so if you're you're at all interested, I'm going to, um, yeah, I do. I do. This is what I do. I, I you know, I, I'm a coach and I love supporting people in taking whatever your life story has been, whatever has happened in your life, it will not, your story not only heals you, but it heals other people, right? I know that my breast cancer, the breast cancer, I don't call it my breast cancer because it's not, I, it wasn't mine, but breast cancer, this experience, I know it wasn't just for me to get to the other side and go back and do what I was doing before. The pause that it gave my life gave me enough time to say, to, to really look at my life. Like not very many people at 41 get two years to really take inventory of how you're living. And the gift and the curse of breast cancer was that it wiped my slate clean. Almost every relationship was gone because not very many people could live through even watching me get as sick as I got. So people started trickling away. Um, I couldn't work, so the job was gone. Um, uh, and the money was gone. I went and cancer like wiped out my bank account in no time <laughs> at all. And it almost took my house. Um, so I had this, I had the, I'm calling it a divine opportunity to sit for, um, for two years and get real clear about how I wanted to recreate my life. And I said, I'm going to start with the fundamentals. And the, and the first thing I know is that paying myself first and, and doing that in real money was a, was one of the first pieces of say, you know, rebuilding my financial life. <clears throat> um, oh, your camera died. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. And then, you know, I, I changed the way I eat, you know, I'm not perfect at it, but I try to eat more alkaline now. I'm about real stuff like, um, organic food as much as possible. And I'm no, you know, no, stickler about all that. I'm not a purist in any way. I just try to do better than I did before I was given this, I call it a reset. Like somebody hit the reset button on my life. Um, so I, you know, I try to be more mindful of where's my food sourced from and, um, and, you know, eat more organic and, 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 and so it would make sense that now I'm even looking at my money and that has to be organic. Gold is organic. We cannot create gold. Um, so my relationships, the way I deal with, you know, my relationships, even it's like, I, I don't, it doesn't satisfy me anymore to sit around and have conversations about nothing. You know, I want relationships that are deep and, and meaningful and rich and, and um, you know, real. I had a lot of relationships that, you know, they were fun and, and I still want to have I still have fun. I mean, you guys, I'm, I'm the, the woman that will go skydiving with you in a heartbeat. So I'm all about fun. And at the same time, I'm all about depth. I want I want things in my life that are that sustain me that that over that will be here over the long time long haul because I plan to be here a very very long time. So you know I I kind of focus on those three areas my health, my wealth, and relationships. So um, as Erin is still working on her her uh, camera, but I want to just you know I have an open seat here. Um, so amazing 30. If you want to jump on in here, let me know. And we got an open seat and, um, you can come on and chat if you want or anybody else for that matter. We've got several people here, um, that are watching, um, just click the button and let me know that you want to, um, to come on the show and, and we can have a little chat. And if not, that's cool too. Um, just know that we will, Aaron and I will be here. Um, <laughs> you are special. Do you want to come on? <laughs> um, 
that we're going to be here every Tuesday and we're going to be talking about, you know, how to move forward, how to um, recreate your life. Uh, if there's one thing a breast cancer survivor, overcomer and thriver can teach you is how to transform your life from nothing, literally from a little uh, an idea from a little a little bit of something i can take i can teach you how to take a little bit of something if you got some commitment and some vision and all of us have been through some i mean i think if you're older than 10 years old you've got a story i can sit and talk with a 12 year old and he or she has a story and you know you can take your story and share that not only for your healing, for somebody else's healing who's on the other side of the video. And in doing so, believe it or not, your life will support you financially. So no longer do I look at a job to have a job support me financially. My, by me telling my story, by me being willing to get on this video and, and uh, let's see, you can do it from your phone. Da, 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 da. Okay, just trying to figure that out. <clears throat> Thanks, Erin, for helping her. I'm going to keep going here. But, you know, what I know is your story is a life preserver for somebody. Um, it will support you. It will support them. And what we're doing, Erin, myself, and a couple of others, a couple of other of us, we're saving and we're telling that story and we're helping other people who want to do the same get a free account begin to save in gold and if you want to come on the show and tell your story and encourage somebody um then that's available for you as well and believe it or not from just from doing those simple things your life will begin to financially shift financially it will begin to change because you're sharing your story with the world for the purpose of transformation um so i don't know if anybody has any questions um aaron if you have a uh, an, your email or your link if somebody wants to get in touch with you if you could type that in um and then you guys can get in touch with aaron and also just know that we will be here next week, same time, same place. And uh, we're gonna go deeper into this conversation about you know, starting over, starting your life over, hitting that reset button and really figuring out what is it that I wanna do? Oh, there we go. Hey, how are you? Ah, uh, oh, hi, I'm great, thank you. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Yay. Well, I did it. Yay. You did. <laughs> yeah. It's just really amazing how I pressed the button yeah. and ended up here. Really? Yeah. Wow. 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 So yeah, we're, we, this is what we do. Um, yeah. Come on in and jump on in, Jilly. That's awesome. Um, you know, Aaron and I are very committed to, I mean, the, the, I have a team of women and what we're doing is, and it's just kind of happened this way. We didn't design it to be women. I said, and we had a guy on here earlier and he heard us talking about all these women stuff and he <laughs> left, <the room. laughs> which is fine, whatever. Um, but conditioner. I'm, I'm spreading conditioner. Don't mind me. Oh, it, it looks, you look good, girl. You look good. You look good. Um, yeah. But yeah, we want to support people in, having at least that fundamental habit, getting that fundamental habit in place of just paying yourself every month, but going beyond that, paying yourself in real gold and finding out what is your story? Like, what did you come to? There's something that probably has happened in your life, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, recently, okay, in July, um, I'm a professional. Um, uh -huh. Some of them are big like Greyhound buses and some are just city buses. Okay. Um, also, I have another job. I drive for Lyft, which is like okay. Uber. I don't know where you okay. are, but 
Okay. Yep, yep. I know both Lyft and Uber. I'm in, That's I'm cool. in Sacramento right now, Sacramento, California. Um, yep. And also, I was starting my own business. Okay. As a travel agent. Okay. Awesome. Yes. So as soon as oh, I you and Aaron have a lot in common. Exam, Aaron loves yes, travel. Do. <laughs> as soon as I take my exam, I'll be able to make money. However, okay. in July, I had a head-on collision on my job. I was hit head-on by a drunk driver oh. on the bus. Oh! So I sustained a substantial amount of nerve damages. In my hands, mm. my leg, my shoulders, neck, you know. And it changed my vision as well. Something happened in there when my head went back and forth. So what I've been, been doing is, just a minute here, I got the puppy that wants to be, okay, give me this. She likes to crunch bottles, so I have to take it away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With that bottle crunching. I'll say, okay, so um, I'm on workman's comp right now and I can't start my business because I have a lawyer and I'm on workman's comp so I, I can't start my travel agent business yet because of the income that would be coming in and mm-hmm. it affects all of that whatever right. you know so um, yeah I'm, uh, I won't say I'm totally struggling and I don't have food or I can't pay my rent or my car note <laughs> but barely, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these things are these things are are real. I mean, the struggle, like they say, the struggle is real. It's oh real. Yeah. yeah. And so you know, you said you said a couple of things that you know, as a um, as a, especially as I'm a spiritual life coach, that yes. that got my attention. And that is number one, when you were first of all, you had a head-on collision. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So let's look at this bigger than just at, on the surface. Yes, ma'am. Something sto- uh, first of all, somebody who was out of their mind, a head-on collision, yes. which drunk, drunk yes. stops you dead in your tracks from the where the direction your life is going, and shifts your vision. Yes. So these the things happen on a physical yeah. level, but on a on a even on a higher level. Yes. Right. Look at what happened. Yes. And then you said you got on this, you came to Blab by accident. <laughs> I have a friend who has a radio show, and you guys can join. Uh, it's um, Ngozi at Night. Okay. That radio or on Periscope. She's um, a woman out of uh, Philly, and she travels in Jersey and New York, and she does, you know, this talk on this radio, and um, she uh, dates a very good friend of mine, and so we uh, get on her show every night, but I have an Apple phone, and all of her apps are for Android and so forth, and no Apple, so she told me, hey, you can go on Blab if you want to join in and blah, blah, blah. You know, because I've been able to listen in, but never really able to join in. So I went on Blab, and I'm trying to figure out how this Blab works, and I'm pressing buttons, and I got you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, so... You can go get one. Um, so I just, I'm, I'm amazed at how all these things just unfold and sometimes it looks like we're in chaos and it looks like things aren't working out but actually they are yeah they are everything is always lined up it's just sometimes you got to pull back and be able to see the bigger bigger picture so yeah um so that's this is what what we do um you know i i'm supporting people in taking your story and how to share that in such a way that you can actually monetize your story. Yes. The reason that you're here, you can just that, because you know what? Your life and what you've lived is enough. Yes. Like there's no more education you need. There's no more tools that you need. There's you the fact that you've lived a life for 20, 30, whatever, however many years you've learned some things, you've experienced some things that is enough. Yes. And, and you can monetize that. 
So um, if you are if you are at all interested, Erin put her um, her Gmail information there, and you guys can connect. Um, I'm basically you here my, to you help. My Gmail, huh? You need my Gmail. Um, you know what? You and Aaron can can have that conversation. You can you can oh. type it in um, okay. in over here. But the first step is going to be just open up a free savings account. We want you to get information. I mean, you don't want to go and just do things willy nilly. So the first thing is just to have a conversation with Aaron. Um, and then the next thing is we will sit down and like, what is your story? What is it you feel like you came? Not only what did you came to the earth to do, but all these things that happened, especially this thing that happened since July. Yeah, you know, it's about unpacking that and how what pieces are in there that could help somebody else. Yes, absolutely. Just from you telling that story, you can help somebody. And so, yes. as a coach, that's what I do. Okay. So I just say, hey, let's get on social media. There are some specific things you can do on social media that will actually build a, a tribe around you, around your story. Okay. And you can monetize Because I could definitely use some guidance. I mean, I have a lawyer. Um, I don't really know how this goes. I'm not really into suing people. I'm just a person who works and lives you know what i'm saying i live very simply i, I i'm not over lavish i don't you know i'm mm -hmm. not diva i'm not you know what i'm saying i yeah. work. I come home i do what i do and you know and um i had two jobs so i was doing monday through friday driving my bus that's my main gig yeah where i could retire from where i have benefits yada yeah. yada union and I was doing Lyft on the weekends and sometimes three days a week, like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, where I could make like $1,500 doing that. Wow. You know, anywhere from five to 1500 Awesome. Well, Workman's Comp only pays me for my main gig. Oh, okay. You get what I'm saying? And they only pay you three-fourths of what you made at work, so. Mm-hmm. I was making eighteen hundred dollars every two weeks. Trust me, <laughs> workman's comp might give me a thousand. Right, Still, I do. Not getting the Lyft money because I can't go work for Lyft because then that will penalize me with my lawsuit and with workman's comp itself. And the new business will be bringing in so much money, and I was going to take my um, exam. You know, I just have to pay my exam fee, take my exam. And then I'll be certified travel agent. I had to put that on hold because once I do that and I set up my website for uh, vacation, um, that's the name of the travel agency. Um, mm -hmm. And um, then I'll be getting monies in and that would penalize me with what I'm going through from my job and the accident. So what's I'm amazing is I'll tell you another amazing piece of this. One of my other uh, women that I work with is a uh, uh, woman who's newly going through divorce and she's been married for 17, 18 years, but she actually has a business which through Paycation and she specializes oh. in Disney. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she specializes in Disney. And so we are doing the same oh. thing. I'm actually supporting her. And they are Disney experts. Paycation. Yeah. Yeah. They she just, she just sent me on Facebook. She just sent me her, um, Disney certifications and all that for all their different areas. But so I'm supporting her in building a tribe around people who, you know, are interested in travel and specifically Disney because that's her thing. So she's very interested in families. Um, but she's got a very, um, she has a husband who has sickle cell. Okay. And, and so they have, and they've always struggled financially and, and all these things. So, um, we're taking her story and her husband's story and um, sharing it. And again, she's able to monetize her life, attract clients to herself who are interested in travel and, and, the, and these things. Um, so absolutely. So when you said that, it just reminded me of that, the other woman I'm working with. Yeah. So I'm sticking this out and yeah. my, I spoke with my lawyer and he's trying to keep me out of court and I appreciate it. Yes. 
Yes. Um, yes. Be also, because of the accident, mm-hmm. I was diagnosed with PTSD mm-hmm. and depression mm-hmm. uh, in October. The accident happened in July, and it had been taking a long time for me to get medical help, you know. And so in October, when they finally started giving me physical therapy, I was also diagnosed with PTSD because I have nightmares because of what happened. Yeah. And when I think about the accident in the daytime, I think about it the way that it happened. But I'm also figuring maybe I could have showed up a little late or a little early and I would have missed it. But, you know, fate has its way. Mm -hmm. And um, when I dream about it, it's it's different it's very grim and they're talking to me and trying to get me to uh help them cross over and they're blaming me and so that bothers me and i so i don't want to see it so i don't go to sleep I and see. so they started trying to prescribe me all this trazodone lexapro all these psychotropic mood stabilizers and things and um you know how to say hold up yeah you know, that will throw me into mental illness yeah yeah i'll tell you they tried to put me on a bunch of uh um antidepressants as well you know when you go through that i mean you know you go through breast cancer of course you're going to be depressed and i said yeah. it would be unnatural for me probably to not be depressed so i'm going to feel my feelings thank you and thank you. get to the yeah. other side uh, uh, of it so um so i think it's great and is, is it chantille Chantil, yes. Okay, excellent. So, you know, you and Aaron can talk, and Jilly, I would love to um, to talk with you and maybe even have you as a guest if you're available. Um, I don't know if you can hop on now or uh, maybe next week. We're here again, um, Jilly. We could learn about uh, your business, and there she comes. <laughs> hey, Jilly, how are you? Uh, good morning. I'm I'm having a wonderful morning. If my dog starts barking, just be patient. <laughs> oh, that's all right. We have dogs. We have children. That's the that's yeah. a woman's yeah, world. Hi, it's hi, all Paris. right. It's, There's Paris. Hello, oh, Paris. Yeah. With her pink hair. Paris. With her pink hair. Oh, I love pink. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Just so, so Jilly, you've been listening to our, our conversation for this last, wow, it's, it's an hour. It's almost been an hour. I told you these things go easily. They go over very easily. How long are these sessions? Well, you, there's no time on, Blab is so wonderful because it's just Blab. So you can just get on and we can just talk. So we had said, Aaron was like, oh, maybe 15 minutes, a half an hour. I said, girl, you start telling your story. Yeah. And connecting with people, you just don't know what's going to happen. So the, the idea is to be open and available. Yes, you know, because oh. you just don't you don't know what's going to happen. So right. it, it can go any kind of lovely ways. I mean, Aaron, when it's time to go, this is your show. You let us know it's time to go. <laughs> um, All right, four o'clock is <laughs> okay. We, we won't stay that long, and we we'll promise we won't stay that long. But oh. um, Jilly, I'm I'm interested to know what uh, what thoughts have you had about what you've heard so far about the show. On the show, well, I think you're, you're you've made some real serious points about going through um, health uh, crises and emergencies, and there isn't uh, the support you need. Um, is, and what I really like about this, uh, the blab that's starting, we we did one about women's networking a little bit earlier. That's why how I flowed in here. Um, and I'm from Tucson, and I've been through um, some hell with when my dad was sick he had a stroke and i had my own health issues and it does devastate you it's uh you got you can't you can't put the same focus on the workplace that you used to and um and there's without killing yourself um and which is what happens <laughs> yeah that's why that's all happens in the first place um yeah. and i uh in my degrees in ayurvedic medicine i started going to chopra university and and I have uh, about a third done. I have one of them done, and the other two are coming. But I understand the different parts of this. My background's in um, business and uh, media. I used to work on television and advertising and stuff like that. Too long to go into, but I come from a family of healers and doctors doing different kinds of, um, from dentists to physicians and from the old style uh, of well-being. Um, you know, the old drugs, like you're saying, you know, you get 
They give, want to give you drugs, which and then they give you another drug to fix the drug that you just yes, took. Yes, they do. They give you a drug to fix the drug. Yeah, and, and there's um one of the things that's free that's been very helpful to me as I started. When when did I really start to get better and make some changes? About eight years ago, 2005, 2007. And, and it really made, um, uh, and I started then on my own business with all different, the different tools that people need, the small business tools, and a lot of them are free. Mm -hmm. you know, learning how to breathe, learning how to meditate. Um, there's a meditation series going on now that's that uh, Chopra, and Chopra and Oprah Winfrey are doing it together, and it's free. Mm -hmm. oh. I had to find the link, um, and it's uh, Chopra, 21 day. Um, Chopra meditation series. It's the second one they've done, and it's about belief. And I, um, I'm two weeks into it, and it's really, really good. And there's a Facebook page for it. Um, okay. 21 day Chopra meditation experience. And so oh yeah, well, I'll, I'll connect with you on Twitter too. And um, it's good. It's, and it's free, and it's awesome. It does help you connect. You can journal after it. You can do it on your iPad or the computer. Um, and I think that helps all of us. And then the other pieces I brought in just because of a lot of the things that happen with my family and having to do family planning and business planning. And I got really slammed with my identity being stolen all at the same time. Um, and the reason it says Jilly Wisdom is I, I have a, a website that I'm rebuilding called uh, jillywisdom.com. And mm -hmm. otherwise you can find me at Jilly Justin Smith. Um, with a Y, which is in there. Um, I had to do things a little weird and different. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. But if you, you also need your legal things in place to, yeah. keep, to keep you uh, protected from some of the things that you're talking about. It just resonated with some of the crap I went through with um, my father's second wife and dealing with Will and dealing with my own family plan. And I ended up spending... Um, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on lawyers getting things done and finding the right lawyer. And I finally found some solutions. Yeah. Excellent. Well, um, I would love to have you, um, and Erin's not here, but she's here, but she's here yeah. in chat. Hi, I know she, oh, you are? Uh, well, I see the open, but I know she's in there. She'll yeah, come. she can hear us. She can hear us. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so, Jilly, I would love to have you come on and, and you know, just share a little bit more about you know, your life story and how that led you to your uh, legal business. Yeah. Um, you know, share with us about what you found, what what's working for you. Um, the whole idea of, of this show has been to um, encourage people, you know, to, to give people um, options. And and there's there's many, many ways to to get things done. Yep. And, and if, we, if we're willing to just share those ways, you know, what works for this person may not work for that person, but they may be looking for what you have. Yeah. So, right. Right. Networking. That's what we were talking about earlier. Networking. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and, um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's the bottom line is if you, if you, um, get with Aaron, um, yeah. I'm writing down. And I'm, I'm working on getting onto Twitter and following all you guys. And okay, this, awesome. Yeah, this, get Aaron, and she can schedule you on on one of our shows as a guest. And okay. um, uh, yeah, that that that's it. Really. So amazing, thirty. Weren't you on the previous? No, because you look familiar. I've seen you pop up. Well, this is my first time actually. <laughs> She said she 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 was she didn't even know about Blab and today she just kind of stumbled on it and clicked the button and came here. I just, I just found out about Periscope like a month ago. I'm totally. <laughs> I know there's gonna be something new next week, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is really, I love this because I was um, I'm really big on networking. I was doing lunch networking, different kinds of things. I've been doing it for. You know, 40 years, I hate to say 40 years. I started working on those five. But anyway, <laughs> the, the thing is, we're all so busy and we're trying, what I'm trying to do is not drive all over town and maybe finding the right person to talk to. And, yeah. and I, and you use like hours of time, you dress up, you pay for lunch, the whole thing. And I already know pretty much everybody in my neighborhood. 
And, and from your side, I am meeting just from going across and finding bloggers blogging about all kinds of interesting things. Women are doing amazing things all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, America, Canada, you know, London. Everywhere. Everywhere. London. And it's just, I'm just loving it. I'm so yeah. happy. It's um, awesome. I'll tell you, when, when I got this reset that happened, I said, you know what? What I want to do, I love yoga and I'm a black belt martial artist. And so my long-term vision is I'm, I am helping people set up a free gold savings account and save in gold. So, and, and that and yoga is going to take me around the world speaking to women and, and about transformation and re creating their lives from wherever they are and taking their story and how to share it in a way that sustains and supports them. So what I'm doing here is, is going out into the world. I've had people ask me to come to all various places and speak. And, and for me, it's about, I want to travel the world, see the world and do yoga. <laughs> Oh, I love yoga. And this is, you know, this this medium, all of this is allowing me to create that experience, allowing me to meet people from all over the world and make connections. Um, you guys can connect with me on Facebook. It's uh, Subira, S-U-B-I-R-A, Folame, F-O-L-A-M-I. Uh, and then my, um, mm -hmm. and then my, my business page is Sacred Warrior Yoga. Warriors. So connect with me on those two places. You'll see the work I'm doing uh, with women. And uh, Erin is one of those women that I am. Um, thank you, Erin. There's my link right there. She clicked it there for you. Thank you, Erin, for setting this up. For getting to know all you guys. Oh, yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. So we'll be back um, next week, same time. And um, and would love for you guys to come back and we'll, we'll keep going deeper into this conversation of transformation and uh, gold and savings. And yes, thank you all so much for your time. Right. Chantel, it was nice to meet you. Jilly, nice to meet you. You too. Thanks Tuesday. For thank you so much. Aaron? There we go. Uh, Aaron, you said Tuesday, November 24th. Is that next week already? Oh, I guess it is. Okay. See oh. y'all then. Okay, bye. Okay. Take care. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.